CFR Network, CFR News, good day, good night, all, shalom, balance, paradise, righteousness, all, hola, bonjour, all of the universal greetings. A returning guest, very special guest, long time since he's been in the lab, I have none other than the one and only Mark Sargent. Welcome back to the broadcast, senor. How are we? I am really well. How, how, how are you, other than sweltering in the heat? And I'm looking at my thing. Has it really been... Oh, wow. When was the last time I talked to you? It's been a while. It's been probably... It was pre-lockdown, because we spoke just before Yeah, yeah, lockdown. yeah. May, was... May 2020 mm. was when uh, I think we did... Or we, we talked about some stuff briefly. Yes. And then... Yeah, it, it has been a while. And then so. the, 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 we've had the... Uh... Of the unfortunate but blessed in some ways zombie apocalypse which has been a, a a tumultuous and stressful time but at the same time has given um people an opportunity to reinvigorate oneself and find the real self potentially so it's well yeah at the very least it has drawn the lines between people mm -hmm. I, I can't speak for you guys over there but over here in the states you know, we have red team and we have blue team. Yeah. And it has really polarized over here to where, even though the man, and all the mandates have been lifted, and I know we're not going to talk about that in yeah. great detail, but even though all the mandates have been lifted, uh, there are people now, anyone you see, and I got, I actually got a chance to fly recently. Wow. Uh, about three weeks ago. I hadn't been on a plane in 18 months uh, because the, the airports were just yes. a freaking zoo. <laughs> and, and, and I really didn't want to follow any of the stuff that was happening on the yeah. planes. And so they they pulled back on that. And I realized that when I'm at the airport, and of course, we've got, we've got a huge problem. You've got the same problem we do over there. And that is there were a lot of pilots that were either forced into retirement or Indeed. quit yeah. or gave, gave them leaves of, leaves of absence. And they never came back. Mm-hmm. So now they are, um, we've got a huge shortage over there. I know that British Airways, for example, uh, on your side, they were cutting flights. In yes. fact, it was at Heathrow. Specifically, was yeah. Yeah, it was, <laughs> was capping outbound flights <laughs> to 100,000 people per day all yeah. the way until September. Mm. And that was just, wow, it's like, really? I mean, at least you guys were being honest about it. Over here, we're just lying to everyone. Yeah. We're, we're, you get to the airport. I'm not kidding you. It's like Russian roulette. You get to the airport, and you punch in your thing in the kiosk, and you, there's a 90% chance your flight's going to take off. But there's a 10% chance yeah. it'll just say, oh, flight canceled. That and is. you're already at the airport. Mm. Maybe you and your family, and and you, you go to you know the, the help desk in there. <laughs> and they're saying, well, we might be able to get you out in like two or three days. And then like, what? That's not what? acceptable. No. It's like two or three days. I go, it'd be quicker to, to rent a car and, drive. And, and actually drive it, which a lot of people are if they're, if they're shorter flights. But it's, it's just absolutely freaking wild. So anyway, um, the, the point was, is that once the, the mandate's lifted, I, I get a chance to fly again and everything, even though there's some border issues and now mm -hmm. there's threats that, you know, that that like they're already talking about, oh, this fall we may implement that stuff again. And go, no, you're not. <laughs> like, the, the public, you barely got away, away with it this time. You can't just all of a sudden roll that out again. But my point was is that the, the red and blue team members, when you're walking through the airports, there's people now that are permanently wearing masks. Yo, Permanent. Yes. That, that's, that's, that's what they do. And it's not just the airport. It's like if they're around people, <laughs> mm -hmm. they're wearing them. So you'd see most of the airport, like 70% of the airport wasn't wearing anything. But then you see groups of people, yes. that they'd all be wearing them, all, all age groups. And you're going, uh, and you know full well what team they're on. And you're <laughs> going, okay, all right, I see what's happening here. Because they, they, they and uh, statistics says this, you know, you drill, yeah. you drill people for two years straight. Yes. You're going to get people that'd be like, yeah, you know what? I feel so much more comfortable. Comfortable. Mm. Very, this is my, my comfort zone is now the, what I'm wearing on my face. Yeah. So we've, 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 we've gotten rid of the blankie, you know, we've become yeah. adults and now we've got something else to replace that. Now we've gone back to a childhood state, you know, after all the fear porn and stuff. And it's like, yeah, you know, that's yeah, something. I got my own little competent now, and, and I can I can accessorize it now, though, Mark. Remember, we can <laughs> accessorize it. Well, yeah, I mean, there's no there's no standards when it comes to uh, the type of whatever you're gonna wear. Mm -hmm. But what got me was that I used to kind of poke fun when I was because I've done a lot of travel over the years, and 
I noticed that Japan especially, you, there was a certain percentage of people from Japan. I mean, there's some in Asia, but mostly Japan, that they would, when they were traveling, they wore masks. Mm -hmm. And I and I it's like oh yeah Asian people and yeah, Japanese people and now yeah. I'm seeing you know Joe and uh, you know John and 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 uh, Peggy lunchbox you know American walking past me and they're you know they're we're doing the same thing it's like oh come on guys really? yeah really this is what you're gonna do now for the rest of your people don't understand it's like the, what happened was even though the presidency changed you know we had Joe Biden <laughs> come in. Even though the presidency changed and then the mandates were rolled back, the the for whatever reason the, the trust wasn't there anymore. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. You told us this is what it has to be. Yeah. I don't care if you rolled it back. I don't care if the mandates are gone. This is what I'm gonna do. It's like Mark, we had yeah. people over here on radio, on national radio, saying that people should be arrested if they don't wear them if you're on benefits you should take their benefits away take right. their houses all kind of stuff just for not like doing this thing but but your your mandates were forgive me if i'm wrong here your mandates were sort of rolled back though right yes yes yeah, yeah, yeah. and your in fact your borders even um opened up we have, more more or less yes we we are a lot more relaxed and 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 i do have some associates who have actually taken transatlantic flights and stuff without too much issues and they haven't yeah. you know fallen prey to you know all of the um the marketing should we say and yeah. as i say luckily they haven't had any issues i as you, like yourself i haven't been away in since 2019 yeah well <laughs> so, i haven't i haven't left the country since though in fact the last country i went to was uh, was um over there when i did um philip and holly okay uh, that was that was the last thing i that was the last international trip that i i took and it was so much fun um that when i came back from a little flat earth nugget for you when i came back i, I flew iceland air so okay. whatever whoever owns that yes. show they, they flew me iceland air so i flew through reykjavik and i come i come home and i'm in seattle and uh, I remember sitting in customs and there was, uh, one of the pilots walked over to me and he goes, hey, he goes, uh, he goes, can I get a selfie with you? Really love your channel. Love your, love your work. And I go, <laughs> I go, really? I go, I, I go, I go, who are you? And he goes, he goes, oh, he goes, I flew you here. <laughs> I wow. go, really? He goes, yeah, yeah, here, let's take the selfie. No, here's the, the catch though, right? He takes a selfie and he's like, yeah, yeah, it shakes my hand. And then. He proceeds to go back into his pile of, of, of pilots and flight attendants and stuff like that. Ne you know, and I am sure that he did not say who I was yes. to this group. And, you know, <laughs> kind of like the, 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 the cool kid in school. It's like, oh, yeah, no, I don't know that guy. Yes. Like, no, 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 no. No, what it was, it was he made, yeah, um, give me a moment, guys. I'll be back in two minutes. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but it was really cool because, uh, but anyway, the, the point was that was my, that was my last flight over there. And then again, I was, it was so weird because I, I came over to do part of the, the Globe Lie tour. That was when I was doing the street activism yes. over in the UK. And I think I hit just about every UK airport there was. So I, which was, which was awesome. With the exception of, I did not actually go to, um, um, Scotland. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't go to Scotland. But um, when I came back, so I did that, come back, and they say, oh, yeah, you should come do the Philip and Holly show. It's like, all right. Flew back, came back, and then um, the the somebody that saw the Philip and Holly show, it's like, yeah, yeah, we have Pancake Day over here in, in the UK. I'm going, okay, I, why not? Pancake Day. It's like, yeah, yeah, McDonald's would like to do a, a commercial with you for Pancake Day. And so I, I'm going, yeah, let's do that. And, you know, passports are ready. It's like, you can even bring a friend. It's like, right on. Yeah. You know, got a, got a friend, and, and we, were, we were about ready to go. And next thing you know, it was like, sorry, mm. borders, borders closed. And that was the beginning of – so I was, I was kind of sour on the whole um, uh, zombie apocalypse to begin with because that's how it started for me. Yes. It, it, and I should have known because when I was leaving – I think it was Heathrow – when I was leaving Heathrow to come to come back, uh, the, the for the first time it was like a like a like a foreshadowing in a movie, where <laughs> a, a a woman came up to me with a clipboard as I was boarding the plane, and she goes, "Hey, we're just asking, have you been to China in the last two?" Oh years? my! And I was like, "No, why?" And she goes, "Oh, no reason. Check." She goes, "You can go on the plane now," <laughs> and it's and of course you know they're still blaming everything yes. on the, you know everything from the you know the, the wuhan thing to the kung flu mm. 
to um, yeah, yeah, just ridiculous. <laughs> but we, but we, but we survived it. You know, for yes. the most part, our our community. You know, the, the whole Flat Earth group never stopped. We, the, the only thing we had a problem with was, at least over in the States, and, and one of the reasons we didn't have international conferences, is that we couldn't find uh, venues mm -hmm. that would let us go um, without face coverings. Yes. So we were having, I mean, the first year we went, we did nothing. And it was sad because we were going to do, uh, you know, our last one in 2019 was in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. And then we were going to do Vegas. Oh, Vegas would have been mm. so much fun. You, you know anything have. about Vegas? Vegas is literally just a city that was built yes. for conferences. Indeed. That's, it's just super cheap hotels, super cheap food. All the bad things in life are there. Yes. And, you know, the, the, you know what, what happens in Vegas stays in stays Vegas. Stays in Vegas. Yes, indeed. For Sin City. damn good reasons. Because <laughs> people are on their worst behavior when, when they're in Vegas. And uh, we were supposed to do that in 2020, and, uh, and and we didn't. And so, Karen from Karen B's channel, she decided, you know what? She was, I can find a venue, you know, low, close close to me, you know, maybe we can do a conference, you know, down down here. And so she did, and it was awesome. So we uh, we got to do some fun stuff down there, and I'll I will be going down there in um, a couple months. Cross my Perfect. fingers. So I take it that venue was a lot more uh, open in regards to. <laughs> well, you're never going to believe this if you hadn't heard already. You know who? What the venue we used? No. We used a Shriners Convention Hall, and if you know anything about the Shriners, yeah. it's basically a sect of the Masons. Indeed. <laughs> so, so it really became, and and that raised a few eyebrows. I'm going, look, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, apparently. Yes. So the, the go figure. How's the irony for that? That we we give the Masons so much crap, and they were the ones that came along and says, <laughs> "Oh yeah, you can do anything you want." <laughs> well, this is business, Senor. This is yeah, business, exactly. So you know, yeah, money. <laughs> Money talks, and it was and it was great, and we and we had a blast. Uh, you know, they didn't really care. And what was interesting was, well, I mean, Grant, it was it was in a town in the south, in in one of the Carolinas. But we the 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 attitude down there was very very relaxed. So the the employees didn't wear anything. We didn't wear anything. Nobody mm. cared, mm. and it was it was did, a lot of fun. Did any of the the shriners actually participate or listen to any of the? Um... I think they did. I think there were some in the background. The the people that ran the place, of course, were okay. Everybody's curious about yes. it. I mean, we've you know, and I didn't. I never stopped doing interviews. Uh, they were less than normal, obviously, because we just didn't have as as much exposure out there. But the 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 interest in the topic has has never stopped spreading, which has been wonderful wonderful to see. And so it's it, we. We, we, everyone was really hungry. And so once the mandates lifted, seriously, once that they took the, the, the cap off of that, uh, people were, uh, doing meetups, local meetups as quickly as, as possible, which yeah. was really great to see. In fact, the, the one I did in Indianapolis just recently, I said, like, look, anyone wants to fly me out to meet up, I'll go. And they're going, yeah, yeah, go out to Indianapolis. It's like, great. Wonderful. Couldn't, this couldn't have been better. Couldn't have been happier. Re-establishing those those bonds, you know, establishing those bonds and those connections, and you know, you know, creating again that community which was once yeah. very vibrant at a, at a time, it unfortunately yeah. got toxic for a period. Um, well, I mean, there was, I mean, again, during the the zombie apocalypse, there wasn't a lot of the that we could do to fight it because mm -hmm. the the topic then changed. All, all anyone cared about was was the. Um, uh, you know the virus of unknown origin. Yes. That's all anyone. That that was the headline for the longest time over here. And then at the last second, just before the mandates were released, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, Russia is now invading Europe, all, all of Europe. And, and and seriously, our media dropped the rest of the virus simultaneously. It's like, oh wow. Well, wonderful, if to wonderful. be precise, if you recall, around that period, do you not remember that Prince Andrew was due to? Oh yes, 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 yes. Oh well, you know she's still um, Jelaine Maxwell, the, the the woman that survived anyway. Yes. She, um, you know, there was supposed to be this big reveal. Yep. You know, there's a lot of, you know, I don't want to call it fake news. I, I just call it propaganda at this point. Indeed. You know, she was it was she was a big distraction because it's like oh she's got all the names. Yep. Didn't matter if they got um they got him or not. They've still got you know her lying around and she's got all the names. She was there too. 
and nobody's name uh, with the exception of of Andrew. He was the only one that really caught any hell for it. Well, and well, and, tr- and tr- truth be told, it was because he had that freaking selfie. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, look, you're standing right there with the girl, Angelaine's behind you. It's like you it, it was one of the most incriminating picks ever. The only the only thing that made it would have made it worse is if the girl was wearing like a like a tank top. You know, something something more risque. Yes. I mean yeah. the the other nail in the coffin would have been the um <laughs> the famous or infamous interview that he did. Oh, where he was sweating? Yeah. Where he doesn't sweat, remember? You recall, he does not sweat, does uh, Prince Andrew. <laughs> oh, got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah he was... He, whoever was coaching him for that interview... In fact, he, he didn't have an interview coach. Whatever happened there, he was just winging it. Yes. And he just kept stumbling and stumbling into where... Even, even the most hardened royal fans on your side mm-hmm. would have been looking like, Oh, this guy... This, this guy, is, yeah. but again, he wasn't alone. There were a lot of people that uh, they were, and the web is so tangled and deep. It the names yeah. are like well, and it was his own damn fault. You don't. Re- I mean, this is straight out of movie. It's movie plot one hundred and one, which is look if you're dealing with powerful people, you don't record everything. <laughs> And then let it known that you recorded everything. Yes. So if you tell, I mean, all of a sudden you let it slip. So yeah, we had cameras everywhere. You're gonna have people, it, and and of course, I'm sure there were some power people that knew there were cameras. Of course, they probably Indeed. had copies of the video. Yes. But there's other people who'd be like, the what now? <laughs> the you had what? cameras. Wait a minute. Yeah. I was. <laughs> well, you, wait, there were cameras where? <laughs> because and 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 then all of a sudden you realize again this is straight out of the movies where it's like and then he gets arrested and you're thinking okay you know and then you real you know the circumstances in which he died and and uh, all that were vi- oh, extremely sh- suspicious strange yes but then you have some people and, and you know people can hypothesize i mean there are people who think that he's nuts um deceased and he is now in a potential witness relocation type program Living well, it up somewhere, maybe in the Caribbean again. Yeah, yeah. There's that too. But but those people, it, what I can only speak for myself, mm-hmm. which is if I was a person of influence that all of a sudden uh, had to, you know, had, who got word, you know, that, that that he was in jail and it was only a question of time that the feds were going to get a hold of him, and yeah. you know, that, because that was the big the the big worry, which was. The people don't understand that government agencies would have been very interested in him because they could use his information as leverage against other people. I mean, you could you could do. I mean, even minor celebrities. Now you wouldn't be able to leverage maybe even half of the people on the list, but you're going to yeah. be able to leverage some. Mm-hmm. And all it takes is a couple of people. It's like, okay, what's it going to take? You know, yeah. how much money is it going to take to get two guards to just pretend that they left for some reason and then get the warden to go along with it? <laughs> And people are like, oh, I don't know, maybe half a million, million dollars, something like yeah. that. Mm. Like, do let let's do that. Let let's do that and and make sure that happens. How they didn't? I suppose in her case, Jelaine's case, they couldn't do anything because it was too much. You know, it's you well, know, the, 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 his his the the, he, the the situation around Epstein was just like, wait a minute. So he was on twenty four hour suicide watch. Right. The two guards left. The cameras uh, uh, failed. You're lying. This, this, you know. So they've done, they've done that, and you know, unfortunately, yeah. the majority have swallowed it up. Oh, he's a terrible man. Oh, how yeah. comes he was connected to Bill Gates? And Bill Gates is like, oh well, we, we, we didn't have much contact. You know, we knew him and stuff. And then later on, a few months, the wife, and you know, they get the, the divorce going on and stuff. It's yeah. Just- yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm sure there was fallout, and I'm sure that there were relationships that were destroyed, of course, over this. But do I do I think he's alive and witness witness relocation? No, no, because I it, look, I'm, I'll straight up say it. I would have taken him out mm-hmm. if it was me. He's like, look, you don't you don't take chances with somebody like it. But what? Why does it benefit me to put him in re- witness relocation? Now, had the feds, which meant that whoever, okay, let me t- put it one more thing. We don't have to drag this out, which is. 
the feds were interested in him, but there were people in power that had enough influence that they delayed the feds even grabbing him. Oh, yes. Because if the feds were really super squeaky clean about this thing, they would have grabbed him instantly. Mm -hmm. They would have put him in federal, you know, you know, put him in a, in a, a very, very secure place and no one would have touched him. So... There was somebody at high levels of the of the in the federal or you know federal you know government power echelons yes. that also wanted this to happen, and so they delayed it. It's like, come on, he's just in a regular freaking jail. <laughs> they go, yeah, he had twenty four, yeah, he, he had protection there, yeah, but it's a regular jail, and anyone can be bought there. So he yeah. he <laughs> served his purpose ultimately. Exactly, and nothing's going to happen with Jelaine. She's just going to fade away. She will she will be the asset. That the government will work, and and I'm sure they are using her to the full capacity to whatever they need her for. Well, look at the look at the documents, the amount of documents that were seized. Or do, oh, they, yeah. they have the evidence. You oh, know, yeah. All the need is for her to potentially connect the dots of sorts. Yeah, and, and I, I think she, I think she had full power, you know, full knowledge to do that. I mean, she she looked seemed very very savvy. He was the idiot. Yes. In this case, he was the one, you know, if you had to pick, it's like, okay, who's easier to work with, her or him? But if you look at it, I mean, how did he come to prominence? How, how did these billionaires sign over their wealth for him to manage? Well, he was he was a failure. Yeah. Yeah, but he was but he was an effective, no, I don't think it was by him, by himself, but he was an effective blackmailer. That's yeah. really what it was. I mean, you can blackmailing if you start out fairly small. Mhm. Mm you can you can parlay that into some you know some great things as long as you are on top of it but the second you get arrested and it becomes high profile no then all everything's off the table and now you become a, a huge liability but up until that point people are potentially scared of you because yes. you don't you know it's the whole it's like yeah it's like yeah you could kill me but then you don't know what happens to the files you know, and, unless you, of course, torture me. And, and, you, and then, another what? element to that would be is, you know, as you say, starting off small, but he clearly had links to the CIA, number one, and to Mossad. Via I think so, yeah. Gislaine yeah. Maxwell. Yeah. So there was a little bit, an, an added bit of danger to say, okay, well, this guy is a, a, a prolific sort of blackmailer and... He's also got the backing of some very, you know, big people kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the end, you know, if you needed a fall guy, if you if you wanted this story to go away, yeah. which was everyone was really hungry and, and hyped up about, oh, what are the names going to be? What are going to, you know, are we going to bring down former presidents and billionaires? Like, no, because... No. The, the the whole point of being those people is that when push comes to shove, they can shove harder. Exactly. And in this case, it's like, yeah, no, they, they took care of him. And then the story just kind of went away. And Jelaine comes up every once in a while. But honestly, there's so many other things that are well, that are taking well, center stage. That, that it's like, eh. well, yeah. And the, 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 the thing that's now become center stage from what I can see, and you can feel me in otherwise being there, is this yeah. Hunter Biden thing, this the, the dump of documents from his phone and laptop with all these images. Oh, yeah, that, that'll that'll die, too. Because only because only because his father is president had Biden and, and people can say, well, Biden was always going to be president. OK, let's just say hypothetically, let's say say Biden lost. Then you could turn that into some some really because either way, Hunter was still going to get so trashed on drugs and drop his computer off at, at a um, at a store. And, we, and again, look, it's, op, you know, America is a land of opportunists. Yes. And people say, oh, no, it's all fake story. It's like, no, 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 no. If, you're, if, if Hunter was dumb enough to drop off a extremely sensitive material laptop into a computer store, look, people, computer stores look through laptops all the time. Yes. And they know who this guy is. They're going, hey, maybe there's some shit on here. It's like, yeah. hey, wait a minute. There is some stuff on here. And, you know, they, they start digging it, the, digging through, especially since, you know, he was so high, he probably didn't even remember which story dropped it off at. <laughs> and then, you know, then dad becomes president. And, uh, and, and of course, what I'm saying is, is, yeah, there's tons of material out there. Absolutely tons of horrible, incriminating material on there. However, his dad's still president, 
which means there's only so far that story is going to go. They, they will delay as much as they can with the media. You're Remember, right. the, the media over here is still Blue Team, and Blue Team owns the presidency. <laughs> so, or, with the exception of Fox News, the, there's, <laughs> it's it's not going to get much play. I mean, yeah, pe people can speculate all day all, all day long about what's out there. Now, most of the material on the on the laptop, as far as the public's concerned, you've got surface sensationalism which is like okay hunter naked with x number of prostitutes doing yeah. x number of drugs mm -hmm. talking all sorts of smack about whatever yeah and there's tons and tons of that to where people were just getting desensitized to it over yes. here it's like oh look you know it's 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 hunter naked again you know high as a freaking kite and talking you know with with with, with adult women <laughs> exactly. We're, we're you're even just the only thing that makes it even more interesting is like, oh, does he have two hookers in the room or three? Yeah. You know, we we don't even because if it's just one, nobody's even paying attention. It's like, no, 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 go to go to a better part. <laughs> um, but as far as the the dealings when it came to uh, you know overseas dealings, uh, you, I, you know I, I don't vote, so I'm not red team or blue team. I'm yeah. I'm what what they call it, um, independent. I've never voted in my life. So it just reminded me a lot of the stories of um, Trump's son-in-law. Uh, what's his face? Uh, uh, Kushner. Kushner. Where, oh, um, Jared. Yeah, yeah. Where he was being solicited by overseas groups because they they knew he had the ear of the president. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there was, there was money changing hands there and lots of back deals. That happens all the time. It, with anything, with any celebrity, you know, yes. it, it, you, you find whoever's linked to that celebrity, if it's a big enough one, and you work them. And in this case, Hunter was, it's just too easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> not only can you, not only can you solicit him, he didn't even care about the power. It's like, it's like, all you have to do is throw briefcases of money at him yeah. because it's like, oh, look, a briefcase of money that I could spend on drugs and whores. Yes. So, and, and and because I need, you know, I spend apparently a lot of money on drugs and whores, and so I, you know, the, this this cyclical thing. So no, it's it doesn't look good in any capacity. But no. if the blue meat, if the media over here hasn't, you remember the press conferences have been happening now for some time, and the blue media isn't throwing any of those questions <laughs> at, at the president. Of course the, not. They're, they're not. I mean, red team, every once in a while, will bring it up. They'll say, hey, what about the laptop, blah, 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 and they just get shot down. There's only one red media outlet in the States right now, uh, and the, the rest of it's blue. I mean, uh, seriously, ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, MSNBC, uh, whatever the others, you know, they're all blue, and so Fox is really you know, battling uphill on this. And uh, so, no, it's a short, short version is the, the laptop that they're just going to suppress that as much as humanly possible. And if they are going to leak anything, they're just going to leak Hunter being Hunter. Honestly, to, to, between you and me and whoever's listening, <laughs> I'm just, I am stunned that he has lasted that lo as long as he has he the fact that he didn't owe he didn't od in yes. a hotel room yes. somewhere and there's so many stories of i mean he's basically been living a rock star life without the rock star part of it <laughs> you know he's got as much as many drugs and alcohol and hookers as the rock stars but there's nothing else tying him to it he's not playing a guitar or, no. or doing anything artistic he's just that but to do as much as he has without accidentally just, you know, winding up dead in a shower, I'm just like, oh, how? The how do you do of, it? The luck of Shaitan, the devil, that, that's the only thing I could put it down to because I don't think the Most High is at all with these, these, these beings. I mean, moving, moving on to his pappy. Um, yes, yeah. He doesn't seem competent. He doesn't seem compass mentis. He, he has notes that, that, that are shoved in front of him that he can barely read. He's stumbling <laughs> upstairs, falling off bikes and stuff. Oh, this yeah. is a terrible I, representation of a, a, a U.S. president. He, I've got a couple of thoughts on that. One, of course, you're absolutely right. Uh, he, and I don't think it's an act. He is, well, he's gotten to that age where, you know, there's, when you reach a certain point, you either hold on to your your total mental fac faculties or you don't, 
and he has it no. to, w- to where it's almost elderly abuse in, <laughs> in, a, in, in a way because he's like they're just pushing him up on stage and um, uh, one of the one of my friends um, he was like he's going he, he thought last summer last summer not this summer right now so last summer because there's no way he can keep going there's no way eventually they've got to but I believe that as part of the the big great reset thing you've got to make at least perception wise uh, it's not just perception wise America you've got to weaken, weaken America yes. as, as much as humanly possible and I have never seen a president vice president combination as weak yeah as this one and by that I mean you've got Joe up there who is even with the cue cards I mean you got to remember he also has pre written answers yes. to to questions and he knows not only that I mean I mean it is really I mean it is it is like L grade school type 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 uh, setup where he knows who's going to answer ask the question he has a little picture of them who's oh going to answer in case he gets lost it's like who, who who's here from ABC <laughs> you know and then he has the answers in front of him to where there was this one press conference where they were asking about God, they were asking about gun control, and he goes off on a ten-minute jag about infrastructure. Oh, I mean, I've com- seen it. yes, <laughs> because he, he read he was reading the wrong answer to the wrong question, wrong question, and people are like, so, the, the, so yes, he's he's absolutely he has actually made made America look about as bad as you possibly could. Yeah. I've there's never been a leader, and like I know a lot about the presidents of gone past Mm -hmm. you know way before the tv era you know we've we've always had a certain you know we've had good ones and bad ones but But no one is yeah no one is bad on television as this one Uh, one of the the big things once television came out the we (laughs) we learned very quickly on whoever the president of the united states is has to be good on tv that doesn't matter you know the the bushes weren't great but but they were okay yes but by the time it but it peaked out at barack barack of barack course he was, was so eloquent <laughs> oh barack was perfect on camera and he was coached a lot of people don't know that uh, there was this little story that came out over here where um if you did you watch any of the man of the uh, superman movies recently yes. with, with henry cavill yes. okay the the black general and i could probably look him up the black general that was in those movies was played by a certain actor and i don't know if he was british or not i could look him up but he was this black actor was being interviewed in a, during a radio broadcast, and people were talking about Barack and you know singing his praises. And apparently, the, the the actor couldn't take it anymore. He's going, "Look," he goes, "I coached him on this. When you when you see Barack on camera, you're looking at me, wow. right?" And well, that caught the you know the ear, and all of a sudden there were some follow up. People were like, "Hey, what are those comments?" And he completely backtracked, and never mm-hmm. he's like, "No comment, no comment, no comment." So. That was about as good as we were going to get, um, with the exception of, of course, and then we went off the rails with um, uh, with Trump because you literally, it's like, well, if you're going to get you're going to get but somebody it, good on television. Let's literally get a reality it, television star. It was levels, though. I think with Trump, I think the main thing with Trump is is his. He was just talking the stupid stuff and his tweeting stuff, but oh, yeah. in regards to the representation of, of a president, at least he was, you know, he could talk, he could articulate yeah, himself. Well, because he had he had so much practice because he had been doing the the the, the reality it's television just, show for yes. so many years, mm-hmm. and the ratings were good on this show. A lot. If you want to wa- watch some documentaries on the on the creation of that show, where he had peaked out years ago, years and years ago, to where when they found him. They, you know, he was just in this rundown kind of office in Manhattan, you know, and, and you could tell his glory days were way in the rearview mirror. <laughs> and no one, people don't know when it comes to production, at least over here, the producers, you do not know what's going to resonate with, yeah. with the general public. You just don't. And so, which is why you, people's like, why do they keep making so many sequels? It's like, because they're scared to death to try to make something new. new yeah. I go, if a sequel makes money and that sequel makes money and so on and so on, they're just going to keep making them. Definitely. It's like, what? I, how many Fast and Furious movies are there now? Nine, I think it is. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, with, with the exception of, of franchises like James Bond, right? Of it's course. like James Bond, that, that's just a, a staple. Mm-hmm. But but the point was, is that... The, that Trump had done so well with TV ratings on this stupid reality show. I, I, I didn't like it, but apparently a lot of people did. 
you know, it's like for the common man, it's like, oh, you're fired, you're fired. It's like, wow, oh, it's really great. I don't know what the hook was. Apparently, that was it. So being over they... here, we watched the um, the Alan Sugar version of Apprentice. So we had a it was a different kind same of, sort of thing. Yeah, same concept, but obviously a different sort of personality and persona. So I enjoyed it, but I've never watched Donald Trump's one. Yeah. Yeah, but when when Brit Britain and America, we steal stuff from each other all the time. In fact, I couldn't even tell you who who comes first. I remember like trying to tell people it's like there was there was an old comedy show called um, back. I don't know how old are you, but back in the day called um, over here called Three's Company, I know with uh, John Ritter and Suzanne yes. Summer and, and and but that was based off of a British television show called Man in the House. <laughs> from from years from years prior it's like we because our demographics are so similar exactly. if, if the show resonates we'll either do an exact copy with the exact same name or we'll we'll just change names right? yes. and maybe tweak it a little bit anyway the point was is that you bring in trump a reality television star and it's like yeah you know what it's working because it's just a continuation of the he they've already been comfortable with him on television so they're just going to keep going and then they switch over to Biden, which again, just horrible. And this, I'll, I'll point out why why it doesn't make sense and why it's all part of the Great Reset, which is, and then you've got a VP, who Kamala, who, you know, she ran for president, right, along alongside yes, Joe, and she was exactly. the first. She was the first dropout. Nobody liked her. Nobody liked her. I mean, her 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 demographics were not tracking anywhere. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Joe's your graphics weren't tracking anywhere, and they were like, oh. What are our options? Uh, Bernie Sanders? Oh my God! Elizabeth Warren? Too yeah. radical. And so they they bring back in they they so like, okay we'll we'll bring in Kamala as the VP, and I don't know if they deliberately knew this or not, but her um you know she's got a tick, I don't know what they call it over in, in the UK. Yes, I know. Um, what you mean. It's it's like a tell in poker, yeah. which is she if she's is asked an uncomfortable question she starts laughing. And it's not a subtle laugh. It's a, it's it's a, a cackle. Yes, I've noticed that. Yes, indeed. Everyone's noticed that to where <laughs> all of a sudden it's like, okay, so if we phase Joe out, we have to bring her in. And even though she's way younger, she's still not going to uh, not gonna do well on camera. No. My argument, people say, well, that's the best they had. It's like, no, 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 no. Blue team has access to something that no other group has access to, and that is actors. Meaning most of the actors in Hollywood are blue team. Oh. So, and, and we've had a number of actors and actresses that have played the president of the United States. Most of them are still alive. Yeah. Even now. And, you know, it's like, take, take your pick. You know, I don't know, everyone from I don't know, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman jumps, springs to mind straight away. Oh, yeah, he's played president multiple times, right? In, in, in two different movies. Yes. In two different decades. Yes. Uh, Harrison Ford, yes. Bill Pullman, uh, Martin Sheen. Uh, you've got all these people that just, 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 they could have played it. And, uh, hell, you could have brought in somebody new, like George Clooney. <laughs> the, the point is is that if you if you wanted to combat somebody, you wanted to, have to put somebody better on camera, yeah. it's like, okay, if, if Red Team puts on Donald Trump, just bring in a high-level actor. You're yeah. telling me that you couldn't get Oprah to run for president? Of course. And, and apparently that just wasn't in the cards because that wouldn't make America look weak mm. enough to generate the big overall arching thing, which is, yes. okay, we're, we've got to have the big war between the, the big players. And in order to do that, you've got to make America look vulnerable. And we couldn't have been, we can't be more vulnerable right now. Definitely. I, I, in fact, having him a lot, having, having Biden still around rather than just falling down the stairs and, and dying, <laughs> even that would probably make us look, well, it's like, okay, well, then now we're in flux because it's like, you know, you have Kamala, but who's going to be the VP? Mm. Ugh, it's just. But it's, then, and then the, to, to create even more division, <clears throat> pardon self. They bring yeah. forth a few weeks back the the, the 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 Supreme Court ruling, Roe versus Wade. Oh my God! Yeah, you don't think that's a coincidence? <laughs> that out of the blue, all of a sudden, <laughs> we're we're gonna do this, even though Trump. Again, the irony, even though Trump is gone, right? He is long gone, and mm -hmm. don't and and I love the fact that there were so many Trump supporters that uh, even in my own family. 
they were like, oh, no, no, they're going to overturn. If I had to hear that one more time, they're going to overturn the results and, and the truth's going to come out. They're going to drain the swamp. I'm going, all right, here's Gosh. what I'll give you. I go, I'll give you all the way up to inauguration day. I go, but once Biden's sworn in, that's it. It's yeah. over. Everyone go home. And it never happened. And uh, in fact, the inauguration, they were so worried about it, uh, you know, that they they put the military in and there was no yes. real audience. And the whole thing was the all the, the whole capital was sealed off. But um, uh, but the, the Roe v. Wade thing, the the polarization of that was monstrous because over here, you know, it's different from from you guys. We uh, because you can do it on a state by state basis over Indeed. here. So. All of a sudden now, it's like, because we need more polarization, now you're going to have red states and blue states yeah. creating their own exemptions for these things. Exactly. And and do I think there's going to be massive migrations from you know blue, blue state, your red states to blue states and so on and so on? Probably not. It's a weird topic because... If you're, because nobody knows until it's, you know, until it happens, you know, yeah. are you going to get involved in this? And so the people that are fighting on both sides, they're, they're usually ulterior motives there. You know, one, Whoa. one is very, very religious and yes. the other is, is more, oh, you know, my, my body, my rights. Yes. Well, uh, the, the thing that shocks me the most, as you say, that's generally the demographic, but on the other side, my body, my choice, I'm seeing a lot, not just exclusively but i'm seeing lots of videos of young women like early teens uh, early 20s probably even like 30s and stuff yeah. making the most horrible statements not just saying look this is wrong you know i should be able to choose they're saying i want to murder babe my baby if i want to i want to kill the babies like and yeah wow. yeah we we we've gone too far Yes. Um, America has turned into, but again, the polarization, there, there was a video I did a year, at least a year and a half ago now called For All the Marbles, which I basically said, look, we, we've come to the point now where beforehand, red team and blue team members could actually, you know, well, you know we just had the 4th of July recently, mm -hmm. and we, we <laughs> you know, you could go to a barbecue and you could hang out with people. And yeah, after, even after a few beers, it's like, yeah, we basically silently agree to disagree. Yes. Those days are gone and, I, and probably gone forever because now people are, are so, it's not that you don't like blue, blue team or red team. And it's not that you hate blue team or red team. You want them gone. Yeah. You want them erased. So when I say for all the marbles, I mean that, you know, we've got our, our midterm elections coming up. In, in several months and that's you know for for house and senate seats and governorships and crap like that and if those elections get turned in a certain way the ultimate goal if you guys don't know uh if you get i think it's 60 percent of the house or senate you have the overwhelming majority and you can basically run the table yes you can you can do whatever you want and change change whatever rules you want i mean re, like big ones and the reason it was set i think at like 60 percent. i think it was 60 percent. i have to look it up to make sure is is so so it never accidentally happens you know you've got to have you know if it ever reached that point it's like wow you know blue team is obviously now t the the ideology is has mm -hmm. taken over the country so we are now at a stage where everything is so hyper politicized. Well, I mean, well, let's let's go off on a, on a different tangent here, just for a second. The the whole um, woke entertainment industry, <laughs> which is like now, even though, and I'm not picking. Look, all God's children, I'm not judging, but not, it, it, I can tell you the demographics are absolutely true over here, which is ninety percent straight, ten percent gay. Just across the board, 5% in the closet, 5% out of the closet. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, though, the, the all the entertainment industry, and because Blue Team owns the media yeah. and the entertainment industry, yeah. it's like we're going to take the minority yes. and we're going to give them a huge voice. Yes. And in doing that, we are going to marginalize <laughs> yeah, and, and alienate your broad market. It's like, look... Ninety percent of your of your paying customers are red team, yeah. you know, or, or, or not even just red team. They, well, let's call them red team. Just, yes. just for the that's sake. That's where of that's where a lot of the money comes from. Yeah. And 
it's like now you're you're going to alienate them and in in the process you're pissing people off it's huge i mean you've got people with you know long time franchises and i'm not talking about like doctor who where where they you know that was very last, different yeah that was very different that yes. was like the last 3 years that's that's just bad writing yeah and it's yeah. like it's like why are you throwing that crap in there it's Indeed. like it, it, that's just bad but over here they're doing it with everything they possibly can toy story mark oh i got uh-huh. to wear to where, for example, here's a great example, and I haven't, I have not watched it yet, but I, I really, really want to, is the the new Top Gun movie, right? The new Top Gun movie absolutely stuck to its roots, and it said we are not going to deviate. You go, yes. Top Gun is for Red Team. Yeah, <laughs> we are going to market it to Red Team. It is nothing but a Red Team movie, and it's broken records. Mm, because, many people have because, said that it, it's very yeah. much sticking to the the ethos of the original sort of. Film, exactly. Yeah. Hard to be- hard to believe it. That it's pushing <laughs> pushing forty years ago, and uh, but yeah, I mean to where because the the and I don't like the term necessarily go woke go broke, although it's not entirely wrong. Uh, the um, well, we'll wait to see what happens with the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> uh, um, one billion dollar production that that has become apparently so inclusive that the trailers they're trying to so hard to, to spin it, but. Anyway, the point is, is there's polarization everywhere, and uh, there's no there's no coming back from it because everyone's entrenched. Blue team is not giving in an inch, and it, it's almost like they get some joy from pissing off red team. You know that? Well, the, hell, let's take one more one more step. The the whole you know the whole January sixth thing, and we won't talk. We won't say exactly what it's about. But the the whole you know the fact that they're still trying to drag the the Trump thing Trump thing through the ringer because they do not want him running again in in two years. No, nope, not at all. Because because it's like, I, and I disagree with that because like, fine, you don't want to run in two years, but what makes you think you're going to lose? Yeah, remember you took it two years ago. Exactly. Why, are you gonna, why, why do you think you're going to lose? In fact, if anything, all you're doing is giving red team hope. That's the part that that irritates me. As I look at red team and I go, it's like guys, it's like oh no, Trump in 24. And going, I go look. I understand you were the same people that said oh no, we're going to overturn the election and and uh, it's like the inauguration happened and now I mean seriously, right after the inauguration happened, now you got them just looking down the road. It's like well, in 24 we're coming back. I'm going. Why would you think that? It's like, it's like, <laughs> hope is the the greatest. What was that line from the Matrix? The the greatest strength and the greatest weakness of the human human race. Hope and is dope. <laughs> yeah, or or what do they call it? Hope. Oh, there's a there's some terms. Uh, there's some different versions of um of hope that uh, like a like a drug. But anyway, yeah, yeah. That, that's what it's that's what it's turned into over here. I mean, red team is is hoping for for change, but blue team is we're seriously we're tooth and nail. We're we're I do not think it'll turn into a civil war over here. That's what the most that's what the banking on. Well, uh, I I know I know tactical enough to say that um uh, the. Blue team, blue team doesn't really do well. We've already seen what they do when they try to protest. It, does, it doesn't go well. It's like fine, you got your bike helmets and your umbrellas and, and your occasional fireworks. That's not. I go look. The right fights. Yeah. The right is a scary, scary group. Mm-hmm. That uh, you know, if you ever took them to that point, but it's not like if you got to the point where you you pissed off the right enough, would they all of a sudden just start burning down blue team houses? It's like no. They wouldn't because no. they wouldn't. They wouldn't have to. I mean, it's different from like the the whole Russia Ukraine thing, where you know you, you can you can you can push you can poke the bear so many times, but if the bear knows what you're doing, they're they're gonna find a way around it. So like again, a little little side note. Um, the fact that Russia is going to starve out Germany. By shutting, you know, they've already shut down the pipeline. Yes, the, indeed. The, the Nord Stream. Yeah, they, they're, you wait. When this thing, when it's, I don't know when it, when it starts getting colder in Germany, but it's got to be, you know, next couple months. Um, when that starts to happen, I, I'm, I'm just, I'll, I'll get out the popcorn because I can't wait to see what happens over, over in Europe. Europe's going to be, a, you guys are lucky, you know, you're on an island and you're, you're off to the side. But, but Europe as a core, oh. It, it's. I, yeah. I do not envy what's what's gonna what's gonna go on there because it is it is. Europe is this big buffer between 
you know the United States and and uh, the former Soviet Union, and uh, exactly. it is it is going to be. And people joke, I, you know, I I don't like to make light of the the whole Finland thing, but <clears throat> people say, oh, you know, oh no, we're going to get Finland and NATO and NATO expansion. I go, I go. People do not know geography. I go, mm. you go look up Helsinki, right, yeah. and then back up a couple clicks. You know, zoom out a couple clicks. I go. Then you'll see Saint Petersburg, right? Exactly. The, the the second biggest country in in Russia and the the biggest cultural center. It's like the big tourist thing of Russia. Yep. It's a golf shot away from Helsinki. My one of my military friends, he goes, he you know we were talking about how how it would go down. He goes, dude, he goes, the ships wouldn't even have to leave port exactly. out of out of Saint Petersburg. They just yeah. sit in port and fire from yeah. there. And I go, and there's only, people don't get, it's like Finland, there's only like a couple cities in Finland. Mm. And and Helsinki is so close. I mean, you could drive there in three hours. Yes. And it's like, what do you think's going to happen there? You go, Russia's not going to let that stand. They've already said. And and you, you've probably seen, I, I know your media has latched onto it, because Russia is just messing with you guys now. Mm. Where where they said, um, you know, they said, oh, yeah, one of our missiles, they, they were showing graphics where like a missile hit the north part of England and then like all the entire aisle just disintegrated. Yes. <laughs> and then another one is said, or we could use a tsunami weapon from the west side. Mm. <laughs> and, they, and they showed a tidal wave just, just wiping out England. Yeah. And I'm going, oh, my God. Oh, God that is, if that this is, is some James Bond stuff, this is, man. This is yeah, like I flashback know. to 1987. The spy yeah. who love me. <laughs> yeah, you're just you're just yeah you're just messing with. I mean, in the media, your your media, of course, just just couldn't couldn't get enough of that. It's like, oh, this is this is outrageous. This is, this is totally unacceptable. It's like, what you started this? Yes, you, you're the ones that kept. I mean, don't think. By the way, I not, I, I don't want to point fingers, but I've said this on a number of shows where I said that. Um, I go look, I go those British with. Every time I heard stories about mercenaries, you know, they weren't just us. In fact, the, the people at the top of the list were the SAS. Yes. <laughs> and, and it's like, and then when I heard that, like, some Russian ships have been blown up, I'm going, oh, that's totally the SAS. You know it. And, don't, and I go, I go, I go, Russia, Russia has lists for these things. And they're just going to, you're just like, all right, top of list, Britain. <laughs> And so that that's why they released those videos. They were they were just messing around. They 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 were basically sending a message saying, "Oh, we know who you are." In fact, you don't. I I don't know if you listened to a show I did a couple months ago, but there was supposedly a um, a fireworks depot that had blown up right next to an air one of your biggest air force bases. Yeah. I think, I think yes. it was it was Air Force Base. Yeah. And, and I I said. And it was really closely aligned with one of the ships that was blown up in in Russia, and I wow. said, "Huh?" I go, "What are the odds that uh, that a, a fireworks depot blew up next to an air force base in Britain?" And and I go, and people say, "Well, what do you mean?" I go, "I go, look, I go. Russia has some of the top notch cruise missiles that are out there." I go all you know. They, your Britain can't say that Russia dropped a missile. You know, next to one of their air force bases, they can't say that because that would that. You know, Mark, I never. Now you're explaining this. Oh, you never thought of that? No, I did not. Oh, dude, that was so. That was so classic them because right after that, right after that fireworks depot blew up, that's when Boris came out and said, "Oh yeah, by the way, we're training uh, Ukrainian soldiers in Britain," (laughs) and I'm going, "Huh." I wonder if some of those soldiers were near that that fireworks <laughs> depot <laughs> next to that air force base that just spontaneously exploded for no reason. I go, Russia Russia doesn't forget this stuff. I go I people it's like look, when you take out a Russian destroyer, I mean you, this thing this thing sunk, right? One of the one of their big ones. It was one of their flagships. Exactly. When that thing ha- blew up. Do you think the Russians were just going to wave it off and and say, "Oh no, it was an ammunition"? You know, they waved it off, but quietly behind the scenes. Again, like you were saying, James Bond. There's some. There are lots of cloak and dagger things yes. that happen. The public does not get to know about. 
And so that was their little message to uh, because that way Boris came out. And he says, oh, yeah, by the way, I mean, literally within like 24 hours after that fireworks thing, Boris comes out and says, oh, yeah, by the way, we're training Ukrainians in the UK, which is weird in itself. It's like you're flying Ukrainians in and training them at your own bases. <laughs> I go, and you think the Russians aren't going to notice that? So that way, when he says that, if it happens again, then then they can blame the Russians. Then they can say, oh, you well, some Ukrainians and some of our SAS, you know, died during an explosion. But they can't just all of a sudden they can't you can't blindside people with that. You've got to give them some context. Oh, so, like feed yeah. them and create a narrative. And then. Oh, yeah. Remember, the, the general public is very dumb. Really, really dumb. I, I what I call it is I go stupid stories for stupid people. The the narrative has to be very, very simple. Yes. And you have to repeat it over and over. I mean, that's straight out of Germany. Yeah, of course. That, like, that you know, is, <laughs> that's the oh, main thing. Repetitive, 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 repeating. Oh yeah, yeah. You you drive it into people, and they will get it eventually. You know, orange man bad. Orange man bad. Uh, you know, Russia Russia bad. Putin's war. Putin's fault. Putin's tax. You know, they were overusing that to where, you know, over here, the fact that we were blaming all our inflation on uh, on Putin. You know, we we literally everything from bacon to, to Kleenex to, to bug spray. We we're blaming it on Putin. It's like, wh how, wh how, why? Oh, don't <laughs> forget Putin. He, he messed with the baby formula as well. That's why, you, you oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Baby oh. formula is now, a, is it still a black market product from what I heard? <sighs> It, I don't know because they have. The, I haven't seen a story on it in the last month, but the, but initially it was like, wait, why are we have this big? The, the problem with us is, and there's a big there's a big difference over here, which is America's good, has always had too much of everything. I mean, mm -hmm. ridiculously too much of everything, to where, uh, we, there's a big difference between food shortages and famine. Food shortages, and it really depends what country you're in. Like food, a food shortage over here means that you only have four types of ketchup to choose from. Yeah. And and it's like, like there's the only there's only eight kinds of pasta on the on the shelf. Yeah. Where I mean seriously, there's been I mean, I remember not we'll just go back five years, right? Five years ago, you know, you go into a grocery store, you just you like a like a major grocery store, like a target or something, and you I, I remember taking people from other countries in there. You know, and it didn't even occur to me. We walked down the aisles and their eyes would just glaze yeah. over. Yeah, way too many choices. I go, and that wasn't even Costco, Co you know, places like Costco where you'd go in and there was so much stuff that they had to stack it with forklifts to the yes. ceiling. Yeah, and you couldn't even get to those. Yeah, and so, but we're, yeah, we're, choice. The short the shortages over here are li very limited, meaning you we notice gaps in the in the stores but the stores have started to figure that out to where that's like okay we'll just make the the rows shallower mm -hmm. we'll spread them out more we'll fill it we we will fill in the gaps with inventory yes you know oh it's probably something you don't want but we'll fill in the gaps to where you don't notice it but the prices are still going up and then we've also have the um i don't know if you do it over there where you think the package is slightly smaller oh of course they've because... been doing that for the last as you say the, the, the time scale five years they yeah. reduce their pack slices down um, chocolate as well. They're reducing them at the amount of percentage of chocolate that they're using in products as well. Changing re recipes and ingredients of classic yep. foods. That's, and that's that's straight out of Orwell, by the way, the chocolate thing where, you know, they say, oh, your chocolate ration has increased, <laughs> right? <laughs> and and it's like, wait, what? The, the bar got smaller, but we increased the, you know. The, the wording uh, is has gotten anyway the, the grocery stores over here have been more or less fine I mean every once in a while people will freak out because something is like the baby formula shortage you know briefly uh, caught get a lot of attention the, the problem over here is that the news now is so hyper you know latch on to anything that's sensational and then they'll just they'll repeat it you know nobody even checks references on anybody else so what it's the once the first one or two news outlets makes a story on it the others will just grab them and yeah. and, and give credit so you know all as long as they say original art article was by blah 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 they'll just post it verbatim and it and it, it generates it everywhere almost automatically within the first 24 so they're, hours so they're uh, creating uh, <clears throat> pardon self an additional drive for people to go out oh there's a there's a problem i need to go out and buy double what i buy or just 
put my whole yeah the the only thing people hoarded though which again was so weird when it happened that was in the beginning of the whole virus thing was the toilet paper oh gosh and that was uh, paper products in general you know to paper towels and kleenex and crap like that yeah. but toilet paper definitely and that's one of those weird human nature things i don't know how we're wired to that capacity but what happens is and i've seen it i've seen it myself where the first person, you know, let's say it's a mother with a family of six, right? She'll just say, well, I'm going to need some oil. Obviously, I'm going to need to, because you're always going to go through the toilet paper. Always. Yes. It's yeah. never going to get unused. Mm -hmm. So she, you know, she fills up half of her cart with it. Goes by and another mother, or usually, it's, again, it's mostly women, but there's some men. Where it's like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. But yeah. then it starts to turn into like a fever pitch mm -hmm. where all of a sudden people are like, just from a distance, it's like, it's like, why am I seeing so many carts with toilet paper? <laughs> they're not even thinking about it. Yeah. They don't, they, they, hell, they, they don't even have kids. Yeah. Right? And it's like, oh, yes, like man, you know what? I got to get some toilet paper. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, uh, the word gets out there, you know, the, the, especially with social media, people start tweeting each other or messaging each other. It's like, have you picked up extra toilet paper? Because it's running short here. And then that goes everywhere yes. to where there were people, I'm not kidding you, at Costco, because that's the big one, you know, because they only sell it in these big bricks, you know, huge, huge bricks. You can barely, you can only carry one, but generally by yourself. Mm -hmm. And there were people that had bought so many of these things that, that they were turning around and coming back. Once they had calmed down, they went back like a couple days later and tried to return them <laughs> because what? they realized it's like, yeah, I don't need six, six bricks of toilet paper. <laughs> you know, that's like, that's several years worth, even though technically, you know, you could buy as much as you want. But yeah, there was these to where every store now uh, runs, I, I'm not kidding you over here, every store runs a limit on <laughs> toilet paper. So it's like, you know, you can only buy two. Now that doesn't mean that you can, you can go buy two, you can go out to your car, come back, buy Goodbye. two more and go to a different register and no one's going to know anything. Yeah. But, but the fact that they're trying to keep, what they're trying to do here is they're trying to stop panic. Yes. And so far it is done is done surprisingly well um to where even like the, the the gas prices over here which i know compared to you guys is still pretty low uh had, you know they're they're you don't see huge lines at the gas station because the pumps aren't empty that's that's the big difference between now and what was happening in the 70s in the 70s there was the you know big embargo over the yes. middle east and, and there was there were stations that just didn't have gas and so there's like maybe one station every three miles mm -hmm. that maybe had some gas and so people were but over here the 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 um, the stations are still full and so everything i mean every once in a while you'll see like uh usually what will happen is diesel will run out uh but but hardly anyone drives diesel compared to, to regular gas. That's so. more of an industrial sort of commercial Mostly. vehicle. Yeah. yeah, every once in a while you get some, you'll get some red team overbuilt. You, know, you don't have them over there. Some big four-by truck, you know, yeah. big Ford, big Chevy. Um, that'll take diesel, but uh, for the most part, yeah, it's mostly it's just the big rigs, the industrial people that use uh, You call them what, lorries? Lorries? Yes. In, well, yeah, well, yeah. Lorries, HGVs, heavy goods vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, those those over here. Now, what I was telling people, I said, I go, you when if you ever want a sort of panic moment, is when the 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 big lorries they can they can only fill up at the major truck stations. Yeah, meaning the local corner gas station will only sell gas; they won't sell diesel. When you start seeing that more and more, but we again we haven't seen it. We haven't seen it yet. This is this whole thing. And it's frustrating for me because I, I, I like a plot point to, you know, I like writing to, to happen on a regular pace. Yes. It's been really slow motion over here to where, I mean, again, yeah, a lot has happened, but it's been two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. To where now I'm like, okay, you know, to where now, like over here, it's like, like Ukraine is almost out of the news over here because uh, Americans are, we're bored with it. <laughs> There's like, what's happening? Is anything yeah. happening? Because, because, yeah. because you remember the um, the the old saying. Um, I think it's from Sun Tzu. Uh, All war is deception. Yes. Which is, our media will never say. And I get it. I get it. Which is, you never ever say, even if it's your own people. Like you'll never, you'll the London Times. If you're in a war, the the London or whatever, the BBC will never say you're losing, because it doesn't help. 
It no. doesn't, you know, if you're losing, it doesn't help to tell the people you're losing. Mm-hmm. So you're always, in, in contrast, you're always winning. So if you guys are, if you and all of Europe is back in Ukraine, well, Ukraine is never losing. They're, all, they're always winning and Russia is doing everything wrong all the time. And even though Russia's taking huge chunks of real estate, you know, they're just dominating. They've been dominating since the beginning. There's of no course, war there. Of course. And but but they they keep saying but but now we have a problem because we can't spin it anymore over here. You know, they've they've there's not, they've nothing left to spin. We've we've thrown all the weapons we can over there, we've thrown all the money we can. And they're still taking Ukraine and you know, we're still trying to say, Oh, you know, it's unprovoked. It's like what are you talking about? You you were going to absorb Ukraine into NATO. What do you think Russia was going to do? Russia with with gonna... an ongoing military issues with another country, which is illegal, they can't they're not supposed to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was just and so again the what I what I've been telling people, I go I go forget about Ukraine. Ukraine's gone. It, yeah. it, Ukraine's over. I go Finland is going to be far more interesting, although shorter, <laughs> because there's just not a lot happening in, in Finland. I mean, if yeah. you, if you look at the map of Finland, you wonder. It's like, it's like, wow, how do they I even know. have 5 million people up there? Because it's <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's just, it doesn't seem like it's conducive to people. I mean, there's, a, there's very few roads up, up yeah. in Finland, by comparison. It's... I go, and then and then the other side, which is um, uh, Taiwan. Which, oh, of which, course. That's constantly that was... in the crosshairs. Yeah, but it, but it's... But they won't do anything until uh, until there's a full blown engagement in Europe. Everybody knows this, which is you know until America and NATO engages Russia over in, in Europe, Taiwan is you know because that's what you would do. You would wait until everyone's distracted over there, yeah. and then you quietly ma- launch this massive naval operation. Taiwan, oh, talk about completely different things, right? So Ukraine is completely landlocked except for the Black Sea. Indeed. And then you've got Finland, which is a whole different animal. <laughs> Taiwan, which is an island. An island, right? Very, very, was it 25 miles away from mainland? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, well, the fact that you've got an, uh, a body of water right next, you know, right next to it called the, the South China Sea. <laughs> you know, it's their ocean. <laughs> and and they know full well that they can just come in there and naval blockade the whole thing and, and, yes. and jump in there. And they, it's like, what... Like, for example, um, you, you, Ukraine, you have NATO and the whole thing over there. But Taiwan, wh- who's going to back them over there? The U.S.? Really? Well, isn't, isn't there very close links? I mean, you t- correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't there quite close links, as I say, to Taiwan? On your oh, yeah. Well, well, yes, yes. We, we have huge manufacturing facilities. People forget that before everything was made in China, it was made in Taiwan. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, everything. And, and you're thinking, why is that? Well, because Taiwan is China. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but we couldn't, for whatever reason, and maybe we were smart even back then, we labeled it Taiwan and to where now China gets really, really upset. Where yeah. It's like you can't call Taiwan its own country yes. because it's not. And they're not wrong. Taiwan is part of China. Indeed. It's like just just because you have a, their own name on the island doesn't mean they're their own country. You know, they might as well call it the, the People's Republic of Taiwan. You know, That's but, what they sh- didn't. Wasn't that a name before at some point? When, uh, with the I'd, have to, I'd have to look it up. Yeah. But, but anyway, once so my prediction is once NATO decides to finally, you know, It'd probably be out of desperation, you know. You you turn down the like, for example, if Germany starts freezing, pretty, you know, once the weather starts cooling down, <laughs> but they they will, a lot of countries in Europe, and they won't be the only ones. The other countries in Europe will be motivated enough to try to unify against Russia. At that point, you've got China will go into Taiwan, and then you know the United States will be stuck because then now you're talking about a two front war potentially. But then you're going to have to convince the American people who are just completely apathetic. <laughs> we are. We're so desensitized. Yeah. Everywhere. Yes. Which is, it's like, wait a minute. Why are we going to Taiwan again? It's like, mm. isn't everything made in China anyway? It's like, <laughs> why do we care? And it's like, well, because China shouldn't be doing this. You know, humanitarian issues and blah, blah, blah. Again, America, I, I love it, but it is so, we've gotten to such a point to where nothing What's the old saying? If it doesn't change the price of beer, we don't care. <laughs> we just don't. Uh. The, the general public. Now, no, that to be fair, if it was an English, again, I, I'm probably saying things that out of turn, but if it was an English speaking country, well, that's a whole other 
that's a whole other thing. If no, was, I understand the point. Totally understand the point. If anything was messing with England, we're going. You know, if that's anything's going, uh, yeah, exactly. If we're going, I mean, come on. I was thinking about this the other day. I go, you know, why why the the UK and the United States has has such a great relationship, even though after all, after all the things that have happened, I go, it's because America is the the greatest spinoff of all time. Indeed. I go, I go, you know, we're we are the um. Oh God, I'll, I'll use a pop culture reference for you. Um, Stargate the movie, right from from the from the early nineties. Yes. Turned into Stargate the television series, which okay. was way bigger. Yes. You know, it was a 10-year original season plus Stargate Atlantis plus Stargate Universe. Yep. I go, that's what America was. You know, the the UK, people forget. It's like it was all freaking British people. Yeah. You know, it, was, it wasn't like, it's like, oh, oh, oh we, we fought back the British. I go, no, the British fought back the British. <laughs> with, with help. That's it's not, it's not underplay. With help. Well, yeah, okay, the fine. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well let's, yeah, let's not downplay the whole French the rivalry that goes back centuries and centuries. But, but the fact that the whole thing started with, with you know, it was a British, yes. it was a British spinoff. That's that's all well, it freaking totally, was. Totally, I, I brought this up on, on the last on the one of the previous interviews I did that the foundation of America was Puritans, religious zealots and stuff saying we want to go to the new world. We sent orphans over there. We sent serfs over there, criminals, yeah. bandits, everything was sent was went over to the new world to try and find new opportunities and quote unquote religious freedoms. Right. And you guys <laughs> and you guys call it do you still I've still heard heard you guys call it the colonies. Yes. From time from time to time. And and uh, you know, if you guys want to have some fun, when I I smile every time I watch uh, the Olympics, no matter where it is, <laughs> because I go, I, you know, it's it's like, oh, China's winning the Olympics, or Russia's winning, or the Soviet Union's winning the Olympics. I go, no, it's not. You know who's winning the Olympics? Pretty much all the time, the crown. Yep. The crown wins the Olympics because the crown, if you take into account New Zealand and Australia and Canada, yes. And oh, you know what? I'll throw in South Africa just for the hell of it. You know, even though, you know, they're kind of a weird offshoot. But but then you've got America, who might as well be the crown, right? It, it's, I know we're our own independent thing, uh, but come on. Yeah. It's the, the, we, we still use red, white, and blue on the flag. <laughs> you know, it, it's stars and stripes. Fine. It's not a, un, it's not a union jack, but no, I've, 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 I have a new appreciation for all things UK. Um, mostly because that you know, I, I, over here we we have a a, t a a network called BBC America. Yes, and because of that, I watched a lot of BBC shows, mm -hmm. and you know, just just loved it. It's like, it's like people don't understand. It's like the greatest actors in the world are um are from the crown. Period. Just they they are. What you guys you guys pretty much invented it. Obviously <laughs> Shakespeare. Shakespeare. And and then when I Shakespeare. <laughs> And then I, I came over with thespians, right? So I, I, when I went over there, the, the couple trips I went and, and traveled around England and then came back and rewatched some of the shows uh, that, that I, you know, some of the British shows that were over there, I, I got it. I completely got it to yeah. where it's like, oh, yeah, Brit Britain, it's like only one group has ever called themselves great. And that was Great Britain. <laughs> Everybody else is like, People this and united this, but only Britain was great. And it's like, that's awesome. And, good point. So, that's a yeah, good, very I, good I, point, that is. <laughs> it's true. I don't know why people, I don't know why people miss that. It's like, find me another group that had that much confidence. Mm. You know, I, and I was watch, I was watching a show the other day. I can't remember what it was. And I don't think it was even tongue-in-cheek. And it's like, you know, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this brash upstairs? It's like, because we're British, <laughs> that's it. And they weren't. It wasn't saying it like like it was a joke. It's like that's what just yes. what we do. <laughs> like, like Britons love to British, queue and shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and all the all the things we've done over here, we're just mimicking. You know, people think all oh, American baseball. I go, what? It's just cricket, but played a slightly different way. Yes. You know, we instead of uh, instead of wickets, we use a strike zone mm -hmm. and and stuff like that. And and you know, um, but uh, there's football. A, but, but I was a little so, surprised. You know, I was going to say that there is also an element 
this also. Oh dear. We have a buffer. Oh, you, that's, something's happened on my. I can't even see anything. The, the chain. Ooh, are you still there? Oh, there we go. Oh. There we go. Now, now we're back. Now, now we're back. The wonders of technology. Wonders of technology. So, yeah. as I was saying, something about something about cricket or football. yeah, no cricket. Oh. Yeah, no, no. What I was going to go into was there is a there is a, 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 a chain of thought where. Like, for instance, American English. You don't speak English over there. You speak American English. So there was an element of, you know, we, we still like England, but we're going to just just change things just to make us very yeah. much different from y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Funny. The, uh, yeah, where, and what's interesting is, yes, no, no, no sector over here speaks um, with a British accent. However, we do have a lot of accents on the East Coast, but when you go West... Once you cross, like, past Texas, mm -hmm. everyone here speaks like newscasters. <laughs> and we don't even have a name for it. <laughs> Where it, it Basically, it's the accent I'm using right now, which is there's no, there's no twang to it. Yes. There's no, you don't talk like rednecks or you don't talk like New York mm -hmm. or, you know, Chicago or, you know, something like that um, or, or the South. Um, it's, it's interesting. Everything kind of became um, um, not normalized, but... Um, there was a standard there. I think it was mostly media that did it. Yes. Uh, to where, for whatever reason, even though you have people, newscasters in Los Angeles sound like the same newscasters in Dallas or, or you know, Manhattan or whatever it is. But, uh, oh, no, the, the, the British influence is massive over here. But we take it for granted. Nobody, again, we're so ignorant. Our education system, we downplay. Yeah all the influences from other countries. Indeed. So like, it's like, you know why it's called New York, right? Because there used to be a York, <laughs> an old York. It's and, sort of like, you know, we have a state called New Mexico. Mm, Nobody gets it. <laughs> it's like, do you realize well, prior, why it's called? Prior to New York and old York, it was little Amsterdam. Uh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I have, I have always been, in fact, uh, I, I have one of my guilty pleasure movies, I hate to say this, I hate to admit this to you, one of my guilty pleasure movies is um, Bend It Like Beckham. Oh, shit, yeah, 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 that's funny, and, yeah. And I didn't, and I learned a lot from that movie about the, the mixing of British cultures. Yes. You know, where you have, uh, you know, the, the big Indian influence. Indeed. And, because it was, you know, an Indian director and producers and stuff like that, and and just you know the the, the culture of football mm -hmm. and the, you know the, the 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 culture of women you know tied to it and I just thought it was just an adorable movie, but but watching it is like wow I go it's 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 so what I love about you know Britain is it's so similar to us but you can see where we went off and just yes. tried to branch off and do our own thing and. <laughs> And sometimes we got it right, and sometimes we we didn't. the The thing that I try to remind people is, um, there's a there's a wonderful video. You want to know what we did differently was we figured out that branding was so effective that oh, you yeah. could do it as a, on a country level. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a a video by a, a German rock group called Rammstein, called um, a heavy metal group, and it's called We're We're All Living in America. And it was their, not even tongue in cheek, their way of saying that, yeah, you know what America did? <laughs> <laughs> they sent their television programs everywhere. Yes. And they catered it to different regions to where, but, but what the, the big one was the moon missions. Oh, and they, gosh. it's like, and, which was why, and they, they said, America, part of the reason America be, became great is because they told everybody they went to the moon. Because <laughs> Not kidding. Where I, and I've asked this in people in other countries. I go, I go, I go. Yes, I understand why Americans believe we went to the moon. But why do you in Sweden think we yeah. went to the moon? And their hands all went up. And I go, yes. I, and the answer is always the same. It's go because it was on television. Exactly. I was like, yeah, but but you're assuming that we would never lie about anything. The American government, the American media would never lie. And and they kind of look kind of you know puzzled at that, and I go, yeah. I go, look, we lie. <laughs> we we paint. There's there's an old Mark Twain um, quote, you know, uh, the 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 writer from yes, 
and he said, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Yes, I remember that quote very well. <laughs> yeah, and, he was, and he's absolutely right because it's, it's one of the three, my, my top three things of, uh, of show business, which is um, the, the first rule of show business is give the people what they want. Yes. And the second is, you know, um, uh, the show must go, go on. But his, his point was, and I've seen this many, many times, and I've learned this over the last seven years because of the producers I've worked with, is that the the producers do not care about the truth as much as they care about the narrative and yes. does it resonate? Yes. And over and over again, where are they? It's like they people. In fact, um, if you remember Carrie Fisher from from Star Wars, mm-hmm. she she had this wonderful quote because they were asking her, and this was when reality television was was not quite peaked out where it is now, but they were asking they were asking her if they think reality television was. Um, especially American reality television was, was cutting in on, on, on actors, you know, and, and uh, diluting the waters mm-hmm. and she laughs, you know, cause she was a lifelong, she'd been in, in acting and you know, her parents were in acting for, for years and years. And she goes, she goes, you know, she goes, you don't get it. She goes, if it's on television, it's not real. And what she meant by that is even reality television is not live, pure, uncut no actor television there's multiple takes there's scripts there's a narrative um <clears throat> when i was interviewed and you probably heard this before when i was interviewed by um, national geographic down in, in los angeles in the segment uh i met this is a great example i met the the host of the show the woman who came up to her i met her for the first time six times Meaning, oh, yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> I went to television myself, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, where I walk up, it's like, hey, let's find Mark Sargent. And I walk up, it's like, oh, hey, how are you going? Okay, and cut, and we're going to do it from this angle over here. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, there's Mark Sargent. And you lose, after a while, the, the repetition, you start to realize that, um, that they can do, they can spin any narrative they want. Okay. It's all the, the power of editing is is so strong um you know we we did that same same group we did this segment down at the salton sea and there's this big segment we had this big experiment we're shooting nine miles across this body of water Mm. and it did not go well for them at all to where the 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 editors in new york couldn't figure out a way to chop it up to where it looked good in their favor so it was removed entirely yes i remember that very well <laughs> yeah. and and that that happens all the time so anyway we are living in america the they they learned you know the that rock group figured out that america's big secret was that power perceived is power achieved and if you tell people that you're the coolest you're the coolest group out there you're the cool kids in the block enough times and you show them some cool stuff people are gonna buy it and the, I, i've heard this so many times you know overseas uh, middle east for example um mm-hmm. you know where people still call this over here the new world yes and it's like why do you you know it's because it's, it's land of opportunity there's so yeah. many things i'm going yeah well about that it's, <laughs> it's, it used to be the new world yeah. but it's not exactly new anymore i mean yeah you have some opportunities over here sure sure but it's not it's not the old days by, definitely by. not it's yeah. there is the most definitely opportunities for people living in quote-unquote third world countries but it's the ethos and the mentality regards to america is very cutthroat very much oh yeah it's it's a different it would it's you, it's nice to go on vacation but in regards to living there i could never do it yeah no no yeah no there's there's some there's some wonderful places in america yes. but uh there are some cities let's say 30 years ago even 30 years ago it was america was a fun place mm-hmm. uh there was a lot of great places but since then since we've outsourced a lot of our stuff we've lost cities and yeah. people don't talk about it. like Detroit. Detroit, Detroit especially, to, yeah. Oh yeah, Detroit used to be a thing. It is gone, and we, our media, does not talk about it. To where it is, it has the same population now that it did in 1900. Wow. Um, oh yeah, it's bad. To where there's so many abandoned homes. I've seen it. I've seen they the videos. Yeah. yeah. They can't even burn them down fast enough mm. they not only that they don't have the money to when you don't have enough money to burn down the homes and clear out blocks you you've got problems um los angeles 
way too overcrowded. Uh, they don't have the inf- it's it's cr- it's collapsing under its own infrastructure. Um, oh, New York has never been the same since uh, 2001. <laughs> never. Um, nope. Nope. It's not. It's not the same place. Um, and I know. I mean, I was in New York several times before then, and then went after, and uh, it was just not. Not different the energy place. there now. Different energy now after that mass mass ritual oh, yeah. sacrifice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Way different. Way different energy now. Um, uh, I mean, it, it had character. It had personality. Mm-hmm. But now it just seems it's it's, it's soulless. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah, like a hollow shell of itself. Mm-hmm. There are other, but and of course now because of the polarization. There are, you know, there's certain states and cities which are, you know, it's like, oh, you know, that's a red city. That's a blue city. And eh, it's just not, yeah. It, America, <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. Love America. Of course. I, you know, I grew up, I was raised here, grew up here. But there are, there are countries out there that have entranced me more. And, and you probably disagree. I mean, it's, it's like my first choice, if I had to, if I had, um, to, to, to go somewhere else, if America just all of a sudden fell, you know, mm-hmm. cracked in half, fell in the ocean, my first choice would probably be New Zealand um, because uh-huh. it is just, it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's very it's, beautiful there. It's, 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 go- it's, a, it's a gorgeous place. It's, it's super clean. The people are really nice. Now, granted, it could be invaded by anyone. Of course. <laughs> anyone with a navy could basically yeah. invade it and take it. But it's so far away that no one does. Um, and it's part of the crown. Uh, the Great Britain, I, I love Great Britain. Um, uh, Australia seemed c- pretty cool. Again, all English-speaking countries. <laughs> exactly, if another form, but, form of penal <laughs> kindly. <laughs> yeah, um, but 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 America's still it, it had it, it. America's had such a wonderful magical run that I'm kind of sad. To, in fact, I made a video called "What I'll What I'll Miss About America." Because we we've gotten to the point now where we've run we basically run its course. You know, the average country. You guys are one of the exceptions. The average country lasts about 200, 200, 250 years, yes. and we're at two we're at two hundred and forty something. Exactly. And it's, we've sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say it's the it's the age old rise and fall of empires. Yeah, yeah. We we've taken we've taken this this as far as basically we're gonna go. And now I don't know really what our what 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 our fate is in the end because I you know speaking from a, a world order standpoint, mm-hmm. if you're part of let's call it the world order, um, eventually you have to figure out how to take America down a couple notches. Oh yeah, uh, because America has has been a loose cannon for a long long time. Uh, I mean, hell, I, I I joke with people. I go, I go. Look, don't forget that we're one of the few countries that just rejected the metric system <laughs> entirely. <laughs> I was there. Look, on, <laughs> the what? On, on on that note, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up. Okay. Um, we are we are we are, we are gonna continue. It's getting it's getting very dark over here now. Oh, okay. Don't some, worry. No, don't don't worry. I will make sure I put the links below in the description. Um, one final question for you, sir. Have you yeah. had fun today? I have had fun. Thank you so much. I, I I you know I hadn't talked to you in a while, and it was really really nice. Excellent. Likewise, it's always fun. We, we we can always talk for hours, and we always talk for ages before we start recording and stuff. So yeah, it's. Yeah. it's Thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm, I'm sure the listeners will enjoy our varied, very varied conversation, not yes. like our usual conversation. So I think we've we've um, provided some 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 good source material and a bit of um, edutainment, as I like to say. There, there you go. Perfect. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share, tell a friend to tell a friend. And obviously, if this is the first time you stumbled across Mr. Sergeant, check out all the links below and uh, jump into that rabbit hole.